Welcome back everybody to our tiny house tutorial. I was just, I'm in the sketch, in, I'm in the section of 3D view here, I was just looking. I haven't looked at this project in a while, so I'm just double checking where we left off. And I think it's time to start on the kitchen. So I'm trying to go off the pictures here. And if I just show you here, you can see there's no fridge, there's a cooktop, there's no oven, there's a dishwasher, and there is a sink. So, and it looks like there's a mosaic tile that goes all the way everywhere. So, let's get after it. Alright, so what I'm going to do is actually start a new family making some cabinetry. And what I'm going to do is do file, new, family and there is ca casework which is cabinet there's casework wall based which is also cabinets but ones that you put on the wall obviously so your wall cabinets and then here's your base cabinets so let's go ahead and just open up casework might as well use this so we have a width of four feet here and if we look at the actual uh, pictures here you can see that these are this one for sure is pretty big this so let's just uh, jump right in and make this now if we look down here this actually you can see uh, this thing's got this little bump out that we're gonna add it just finishes the edge, looks a lot nice, nicer than having it open. So let's go ahead and try to make this one right here on the end. So let's jump back into Revit. So I'm in the case, we're in reference level. Uh, we got a depth of two feet. We got our center reference plane. We got all these different planes. I'm trying to work more off of these planes than just kind of free form. So let's go to the Let's go to the let's go to the left side. So in the left side, what plane is this? Oops. Come on. So that's the back, and this is the front. Always just making sure to orient our views correctly. All right. So let's go ahead and start creating this cabinet. This should be pretty simple. Uh, we're gonna go set and we're gonna set this to our left reference plane left which I think it automatically did once we went into the elevation view but just a very wary person in that realm so let's go ahead and click on our line and we need to put the toe kick out first so I'm gonna go in we need we got two feet there so we actually need to go in 21 inches two feet nine because that'll be three less and then we're gonna go up four and then we're gonna go over and then now they go all the way up to three feet in this uh, I don't want to do that because one I want to give an inch and a half left for the countertop so here I'm gonna go up 30.5 inches and then straight across and then back down so that's the profile of our entire cabinet and let's go ahead and yeah let's go ahead and finish that wait let's go ahead and make it uh let's make it four feet exactly what it says so four feet and extrusion four feet apply then hit that there you go all right so we have this right now so we just kind of have this like big blob thing that's going to represent our beautiful cabinet. Alright, so let's continue on with this. Uh, let's go ahead and hit create. And what I want to do is give the illusion that there's these these custom drawers in this thing. So I'm going to go to, I'm going to use a void extrusion. And I'm going to do set you know, if we were a cabinet maker and this was our company, obviously this is not what we'd be doing. We'd set this thing up by the specs and make this thing absolutely gorgeous and perfect and all that fun stuff. But 
we're not doing that. All right, so from here, I want this side right here because this is our custom end. It's gonna be a little bit thicker than this side. This is where the other uh, cabinet will be attached. So what I'm gonna do is just throw in a box like this, something like that. Just go ahead and then we're gonna use our dimensions to constrain it. Oh boy. Now that's something I really need to learn is how to fix that. <laughs> that is so big. Okay. Let's make this eight inches. So I did two down from there. I clicked on that one and really see like that one. See how I'm not getting the edge. So I gotta put a dimension over here. And I gotta put a dimension over here. Let's just whatever it is, let's just duplicate it. That's odd. Okay. Let's just double it. So this one we're gonna do two, make it two all the way around, not two feet. That's the problem with jumping from program to program. Forget all these little things. All right, so two feet, got two, two, this thing's gonna be eight. And then whenever you look at, you can see that tiny little offset, and I'm, I'm not a cabinet maker, I have no idea what that is, but you can see that gap. So we're gonna try to make that gap because you can see it and you can see it everywhere. So we're gonna try to do that and make it look, you know, nice and presentable. So let's go back to, actually I have an idea. Because we're gonna put these cabinets together, let's actually make this one. That way when we put two of them together, we get two and then it looks, it looks, better okay so then what I'm gonna do is take this and I'm gonna do an offset of let's just do something really small like a quarter of an inch or three eighths or something so one fourth of an inch and I think we gotta do negative because we're gonna do the box so I get my offset one fourth and then I'm gonna click just right on top of the same line just like that and depth uh, four feet. No, we don't need to go four feet. How about uh, we just, just we're just giving the illusion? So how about eight inches, just in case? And let's go ahead and hit finish and see what happens. I'm always wary if it's going to go the right direction. Perfect. It did. It went the right way. Awesome. Okay, so. Let's go back. Uh, I wish it was shaded with. Okay, never mind. So I'm going to take this because it's on the same plane. This should work. I should be able to just copy the extrusion straight down like that 10 inches. So I should be able to just do 10 inches straight down from the top or anywhere. It doesn't matter. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And remember, this one is going to become two once we make that second cabinet. So. I'm going to take this, copy, again, 10 inches and see what we get. Okay, so we're too close down here. So the bottom one is usually the biggest drawer. So let's go ahead and delete the middle one. I'm going to delete the middle one. And what I'm going to do is double click on this extrusion and I'm gonna move it up. Actually, what I'm gonna do is just draw a line. I'm gonna delete this line in a second, but I'm gonna put this at two inches. It's a little, probably not the best way to do this, but it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna use that line as a construction line, basically. Okay, that was odd. I'm pretty sure I clicked all those. Holy smokes, let's try this again move so I'm just trying to get that there we go and now I'm going to delete that line because I don't need it anymore that was just the two inch we could have measured and moved it up and done all that fun stuff if we wanted to and so now what I'm going to do is copy this one again it's going to overlap or not really but it's going to do that <laughs> I'm gonna put it right in the middle like so, but then I want this to be two, two inches, two inches, because it's kind of, you know, our, our separation here between everything. 
So I'm going to click on this and say edit extrusion. And if I were to dimension this off of here to here, what do I have? One and one fourth. So you can see where I'm going with this. Uh, what I, I'm just going to move this down because I'm going to use that. I wonder if I can, oh, I can't change it because it's a, because I can't push this. Very odd. Okay. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing I just did with the bottom. I'm going to draw a line. That's two. I'm going to push this down. Push this up until I lock on. And you can see that it does a very, Revit does a great job of locking on, given your zoom of where you want to be with that. By increment, that's what I meant. Sorry, trailing off there. So our middle drawer is gonna be a tad bit smaller than the other two. And what you can do now, and we're going about this very, uh, very interesting way, but you know, because this is the smallest one. It's probably not how any cabinet maker would do this. I'm gonna actually take this, move it up halfway. Then I'm gonna take this one and move it back down into its spot. And then take this one and move it back up again. So that was a lot of work not much reward I this and we're throwing a dimension just to make sure so I'm off by an eighth tried and I need to zoom in really close to do this or could just grab this. Nope, it's not gonna let me because it's a whole thing. Alright. Alrighty, so we're gonna go back and do it the other way because this is the easiest way to do this. Alright, two inches down. And I'm off by an eighth, and that's just bugging me, so. Oh wait, continue, delete that line. If you were, you know, this is so close. If you were very close and you are sick of following along with my very interesting approach to that, then that's totally okay. All right, so there's our custom cabinet tree all ready and set. And now we just need to make a material. So I'm going to try to make the same kind of off-white, antique white kind of thing that's in the image here, almost like a cream color. So I'm going to go and just make a basic paint. So easiest way to do this is just grab one of these, or grab the big extrusion, come over here to where it says material, click the three little dots. Click new material, right click, rename, I'm gonna call this cabinet paint. Cream color. Appearance, it's just gonna be a color, so over by the yellows, I guess. Between the yellows, the oranges, something like that. Looks pretty good, apply, apply, and you know what, for what we're doing, that's gonna be perfect. All right, so let's do a file, save as. Very, very important. File save as, let's go ahead and make sure I put this in the right folder. I'm gonna pause the video here for a second. So in my tiny house folder here, I'm gonna call this base cabinet. Four feet, because that's what it is. And I'm gonna hit save. And I'll load it in. Load into project. 
and I haven't saved it in a while. I'm gonna go to my first floor. Zoom in over here by the kitchen. And again, this these uh, detailed lines were just kind of a just kind of an idea, so to speak. And you can see. Oh, we forgot to do one thing, but you can see that it's floor base, so there it is. And I can move it. And I'm just gonna plop it into place like that. And our kitchen's actually much bigger than that, so we can push this off to the side, or maybe we can put a fridge here, or what have you. The fridge we're just gonna load in from BIM objects, so it's not even really crucial that we even do it, but I'm gonna make another view of my kitchen. And there it is. And you can see these windows are way, way too big for the kitchen, but I think for this project they're gonna be just fine. We might as well just leave them. Uh, yeah, that looks good. We forgot to do that little tiny chunk right there. So I'm gonna double click on this. And I'm gonna do this in 3D because it's easiest. And create extrusion, set work plane, pick plane. Click over here and I'm gonna rotate my view. So I'm clicking, I'm working on this face. Like so. Hit the checkbox, go the other way. Click on it, type in negative four inches by category, cabinet cream, and it should not give me that edge because, oh, here's what we can do. Because I made it a separate extrusion, it's gonna give me that little edge right there, but we can do this. We can come up here to this little button called Join Geometry. So we can grab that and grab that and ta-da, and now it's part of it. So now we don't see that little thing and it gives us that nice finished edge over here. So let's load it back into project and when you do this, say override and it should, ta-da, magic. Perfect, so let's go ahead and make another, really quick, we're gonna make another uh, one, but we're gonna make it half the size. So let's go back into this, go to 3D. This is gonna take just a couple minutes. File, save as, family, we don't wanna make sure, we wanna make sure we do not save over the other one. Base cabinet, two feet. And then I'm gonna delete this thing. And then it's gonna give me an error when I do this, but oh, we we'll could probably do these first then. So void extrusion. Now because this is on this side, we're gonna bring this all the way across here. So let's go into edit extrusion. And I'm gonna click there and there. That's four inches. I'm not sure why we can't edit that dimension, but we can't. So I'm gonna go in and make this, I'm just gonna push it because of the amazing tools that Revit gives us. Oh, we can do it in here, but we just can't do it inside. Okay, whatever. All right. So same thing. I'm going to do, I'm going to double click on this void extrusion again, just to make sure I'm off by a fourth. So I need to go very interesting that it's not snapping when it usually does such a great job of snapping. Okay. Um, We'll do it like we did before, two inches. Not having the best of luck with that. Oh, there we go. Actually, uh, duh, that was my mistake. That should have said um, one half because we were adding to it. All right, so this is gonna be two feet total. So it's gonna be half the size. So I'm just gonna type in two feet. And I'm gonna just remember, we're gonna delete this line and this line when we're done. So I'm just gonna push and pull these back. 
push and pull these back until this one says two and this one says a fourth. Good, now we can delete that and delete this and hit finish. And the reason why we did that is because now we have all these beautiful things we can lock to. Whoops. Yeah, make sure you don't X and it really wants to just go right on top of that. There we go. Make sure you don't get stuck on top of the other one. So I'm just lining these up. And again, the snapping in Revit. I keep saying how wonderful it is, even though I just kind of screwed it up there. But there we go, there we go. There we go, bring this one in. It's always easier to zoom. Wow, I got that one right. How about that? Okay, so finish that. And then what we can do is we could just push and pull this, or we could actually make this much easier and just type in two feet over here. Can't make extrusion. All right. Well, it doesn't like that then. So we're just gonna, oh, I see. I see what's going on here. See that? That one's getting tied to it. And that's fine because we have another one right there. So I'm actually gonna go back, click on this, I must have somehow locked it to that edge. Hit apply, and we say, yep, go ahead and delete that. Which So we lost our middle drawer, but the bottom one is identical to it. So I'm just going to click here, type in 10 inches, and that should be right in the middle. And it is perfect. Looks good. So we just modified the first one. And I totally forgot that because we're butting this up to the other cabinet, this edge needs to be one inch, and this one can stay at two, but this one over here needs to be one inch. So let's go back and fix that real quick. We can actually fix that in this view. I'm gonna hit front, and I'll actually fix it in the front view. And you can see how we built this off this edge, which was really uh, a mistake. On my part, we should have built it off the center and gone both ways and used our actual parameters, but you know what, it's gonna work. So this is two, and we actually want it to be one. So there's one, and then this is gonna be, oh, it's not gonna, it's not gonna snap. I'm gonna go into and edit this. So, this was snapping because I had this dimension on it, and the other one was not snapping because it was in that freeform push pull kind of thing. So I'm just shifting these over so I have a one inch gap. And if you saw this mistake beforehand, then that is awesome. All right. Now let's load in the project and say override existing. And I, I renamed this kitchen view. But now you can see how the cabinets have a perfect two inch gap between them. And we got a four inch over here and then a two inch over here. And then we're just gonna put a filler space back here and work our way over to the wall. And that will do it for this video.